Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I'm going to focus on testing some reusable launchers. So, so far we've been using stage recovery to recover our launchers, but I want to check out whether the launchers are legitimately recoverable first, and then after I test them properly, uh, let stage recovery do it. So that is the new plan. and. For starters, uh, there are basically a few ways of doing this. Uh, the first one, which I can't use stage recovery for, would be the type 1 sort of recoverable system, which is an SSTO. So you take the payload directly into orbit, the SSTO uh, retroburns a little bit, and then comes back home, or close to it. And in that case, you have a lot of re-entry heat, but you get the whole system intact, you don't lose anything, except for the fairings. And so that's a good way to go, but it also takes a lot of time, right? Because you have to manually do the whole thing. You can't really trust stage recovery to handle that. Uh, method number two would be to land it on the eastern peninsula. So you have it do its full arc, no boost back, just uh, land on the eastern peninsula. Uh, mode three would be like a barge, uh, so that'd be closer in. So one, uh, the first way is going all the way around. The second way is to make a really long arc to the Eastern Peninsula. Uh, then you got a shorter arc to a barge. And then finally, return to launch site. Uh, this one, we'll see how far it goes. <laughs> it, it might be trying to splash down in the ocean. It might be return to launch site. I'm hoping it's return to launch site, but I'm not too sure. Uh, now, here we've got a useful payload because this is a career mode series. I don't want to launch useless payloads and there is no testing per se uh, so everything has to cost right so this is a, a payload uh, fuel tank it looks like an orange tank but it's not that heavy it's actually less heavy than that uh, the whole payloads 29 tons and it's got a docking port on top it's got the controller the reaction wheel RCS thrusters a little uh, twitch thruster at the bottom solar panels so it's basically a fuel tank that can rendezvous with a target and so if we need to refuel, it'll be up there. And it can handle that on its own is the idea. So that's what it is. And then the key to uh, the recoverable first stage that returns home, right, uh, return to launch site, is that your upper stage has to be very, very fast at getting to orbit because uh, you need to switch from that stage back to the launch stage and in the, quickly enough so that you can control launch stage's descent. And so the logical thing to use is a procedural SRB. And this is the largest I can make a procedural SRB. It doesn't actually go any bigger than that. Uh, so that's the maximum size we've unlocked so far. And I've uh, increased its thrust so that it only lasts for 30 seconds. So very high thrust to weight ratio. Uh, because of its size, it only gives us 911 meters per second. That's the best I can do uh, with our current technology. If we unlock other technology, we would be able to get uh, better results, I think. Uh, I hope. But uh, yeah, for now, this is the best we can do. But it has the benefit that if we take a look at this stage with its reaction wheel and controller as well, just in case, um, this is 24,461. This stage adds about 8,000 to it. The booster itself is the vast majority of that. Uh, it's about 6,000. So that's an 8,000 uh, fun stage. And taking a look at alternatives, this was the best option. Certainly if we want this much thrust, we have no nothing else to go with. I mean, if we uh, that is about the same thrust as two, skipper, two skippers, and two skippers would be 10,600 without the fuel. So, yeah. So that's why the SRB, and of course we have a reaction wheel to make sure it's pointed in the right direction. Um, and then we've got the actual recoverable stage. So, separatrons, uh, this is the controller, the reaction wheel, and this is an RCS tank at the bottom there uh, for these little um, RCS ports which will help us keep stability once we land we've got the air brakes we've got parachutes drogue chutes main chutes and that's we have to remember that later on we're going to be using stage recovery I don't know how it how well it does with the using thrust you know locked fuel and all that 
But uh, here we have enough parachutes that should land with 5.3 meters per second. So that should be alright. Um, then five skippers at the bottom. And now we don't have action groups unlocked, uh, to my dismay. So, uh, I have been unlocking stuff, by the way. Let me actually take a step outside to mention that. Because I haven't been neglecting the building unlocking. Actually, if you remember at the last, uh, at the end of the last episode, I had six million funds. Now I have less. The launch pad is fully upgraded. I upgraded the spaceman hangar to the first, uh, step. I think maybe an upgrade to the vehicle assembly building right now would be good. Um, yeah. Alright, we'll, we'll invest in that. Uh, otherwise, I think everything else is the same. I still haven't unlocked the last upgrade there or the R&D building, so we have to keep in mind that we have these things to pay for. And also, unlimited kerbals is something that still needs to come up. So we actually have a lot of things we can action group. Oh, it unlocked the upper tank for some reason. I want that locked. Uh, otherwise it shows it's Delta V. So let's see. I don't believe I have smart parts in here. Those would be handy right now. Yep, those would be handy. But anyway, um, we could lock this tank for instance, but I, I don't think we need to. The fuel will drain so that the fuel will be at the bottom anyway. So, yes, um, I, I think I want to be able to arm the parachutes, but first let us assign the center engine to action group 0, the outer engines to action group 9. I'll say the drogue chutes and the main chutes arming on 8. And that should do the trick, actually. Okay, well, that is the first recoverable launcher, and we'll try and bring it back to the Space Center, but I have 911 meters per second, and I absolutely need to make sure that that gets the payload to orbit. We're not intending to use the payload's fuel to get it to orbit, so this has to finish the job. Um, in theory, it would be better not to have it finish the job and let it re-enter and have the payload do the trick, but we can't rely on the possibility that the payload will be able to do that part. Uh, maybe for these tests we could, but let's take it out to launch pad and do the thing. Thinking about it, I don't think I can return to launch site because I need to accelerate the payload to at least 1,500 meters per second. So more likely we are going to do uh, what I refer to as a type 2 sort of thing. Well, then we'll be at landing at night since we're so close to night here. Maybe we should time warp to the next day. We, we're probably going to try a Type 2, which is landing on the Eastern Peninsula here. Otherwise, uh, going 1,500 meters per second, I don't think we have enough juice to boost back. Okay, I mean, it's a fine looking rocket at least. Alright, throttle up, SAS is on. Ignition. sound barrier. Approaching max Q now. The target velocity at uh, first stage set is 1,500 meters per second. Well, something about this doesn't uh, seem right. Let's do that. Separate the fairings. Gotta clamshell that. Okay, that's 1,500. Set. Okay. Well, I guess coasting to Apoapsis would be the wise thing to do with this, actually. But then we'd lose the opportunity with that. Hmm. Didn't think about that. Uh, orbital crit? No, uh, let's, let's surface zero. Let's see what happens. Uh, again, the payload can make orbit on its own if necessary. Let's just hold uh, surface zero. Uh, I guess throttle up and ignition. Got 
It will be a lopsided orbit. And not really in orbit, but I guess we can finish that off with the payload. Uh, it's, it isn't bad. Alright, um, we'll leave that be for now. Now in place of the... Ooh, this is an interesting orientation. In place of the barge landing, I, I had been trying a splashdown landing in the colonization series, so I'm, I might go with that again. How far off are we? Um, I don't I don't think we need to retro burn. Uh, if anything, we need to burn a little bit further in order to hit the eastern continent. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have air brakes. Yeah, I don't think I need air brakes. I need to go further as far as possible before slowing down. But I don't think we'll reach anyway. It's a fine looking stage, I think. Downside is we are going to be coming in fairly fast. I mean, not orbital speed fast, but fairly fast. So we'll have to see whether the engines can handle this kind of heat. We're also losing ground here. I hope we can reach ground. So here we are. We've got heating. Oh, we've got overheat. Um, I'm running the engines to slow us down. Looks like that much does the trick, about 200 meters per second to slow down. But that leaves us maybe not hitting land? I don't think we gotta hit land. And we need to slow down more just to allow the shoots to happen. Okay, um... We're on the edge here. Now I know it's not Falcon 9-ish, but in this case we were coming in very fast and wouldn't be able to slow down manually. So I think I should try and rig this for splashdowns instead. We'll try another one that actually does a boost back to to home. Or I could try a lighter payload. Like uh, Falcon 9 use has a lighter, uh, only goes return to launch site on a lighter payload. Mm, it's gonna topple. Boy, is this familiar. Well, the controller was lost, but the engines are here, so we can recover this part. How much of the whole vehicle is that? I mean, the first stage is like 90,000 altogether. Oh, I didn't give a dialogue. Darn it. Okay, so I'm going to try and rig it for splashdown, which means I'm going to put the parachutes on one side and floats on the opposite side to counterbalance the parachutes. Oh wait, I almost forgot about the, the payload. We need to make sure the payload gets to orbit. Full orbit. So, uh, this the, the SRB can re-enter, I suppose. Okay, we are still approaching apoapsis. Okay, and I will dub this fuel tank one. Let's see, can I reach the controller? All right. All right, now back to the VAB. Okay, everyone, this is the Ithaca two and I have put floats on one side and I have put parachutes on the other side so the parachutes will open and it'll splash down on this side hopefully safely but we'll have to see. I uh, brought it into the SPH that's why I had to save the lower stage as a sub-assembly so I brought it into the SPH made sure when the tanks are empty except for this bottom tank that uh, the parachutes were arrayed around the center mass so the center mass is right there when the tanks are empty so that was the idea and we will see how it works again we'll try and uh, bring some fuel up into orbit like this it costs a lot hopefully we'll recover some of it and of course uh, stage recovery will normally manage this all on its own and when the tanks are empty 
uh, this bottom stage would have 4.8 meters per second so it should be able to survive. Let us see what happens. Okay, now it's locked. All right. Okay, so everything's go. Ignition. And launch. By the way, right now, the maximum diameter of my tanks is 3 meters. So that's why we have to put these engine pods like that. That was not, you know, incidental. It's because my tank size is limited. Probably with the SRV, we need to pitch down a bit instead of having the pitch up or even zero pitch that we had the last time. Let's throttle down. Again, we'll need to reserve some fuel to make sure that we can slow down, right? That is not optional. And we don't want to go faster than we absolutely need to, so... Let's say... There. Alright. Fairings. Oh, they're clamshells. Okay. Uh, okay. Hmm. A little bit of stickiness on the fairings right now. Alright. Uh, so, we want to go a little bit negative in pitch. Uh, maybe just three degrees will do the trick. I mean, apoapsis is actually lower than last time. Alright. Uh, ignition. No, it still sort of went the same way, actually. So, pitching down even more probably would be necessary. Well, I mean, we uh, if we have the... we If we start to burn at 55 kilometers, there's no way we're going to have a periapsis that's going to be higher than that. So, we have to aim a little bit higher with the first stage next time. Okay, well, anyway, let's jump back to the first stage quickly. Uh-oh, it's in the atmosphere. Oh, shoot. Mm, well, we'll have to rely on stage recovery to recover it this time, then. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're uh, it's still in the atmosphere. Yeah, we need to do a higher toss. Well, I guess this will be a good test to see if stage recovery will do the thing. Yeah, uh, it looks like stage recovery did it. That's the one, right? Yep, that definitely is the one. Uh, of course, with the distance being what it is, it's 80% return. So stage value 95,000, total refund 77,000. But stage recovery can handle it. But the goal was to test whether it was actually, uh, actually recoverable. Really, really recoverable. So still, jury's still out on that one. I guess we can separate off the SRB here. And solar panels broken. Mm, probably because of the way uh, both of the solar panels are broken. And I guess that's because of the way the clamshell fairings separated. This clamshell fairings broke it. Maybe I should just go back to confetti fairings. I won't be focused on it, so it shouldn't lose electric charge, but it'll have a limited amount. Okay, that's good enough. Let's try that launch again, because I do want to try the parachute and float thing. But uh, let's take a look at our budget at the Space Center first. Now ah, we're still at 4.5 million. It should be fine. Okay. Okay, here we go again. And this time we need to hit a higher trajectory, so gotta remember that. Make sure that we launch it to its target apoapsis on the first stage, instead of getting too low in the atmosphere, in which case we won't be able to switch vessels. All right, ignition, and launch. Well, at least the rocket is really stable. Um, we're going through the speed of sound now. No, 
no obvious issues with control. Okay. We gotta keep an eye on the surface horizontal speed, actually. Okay, I think this is good enough. Alright, bearings. Oh, I should have taken off the clamshell. It destroyed the sh uh, solar panels again. Shoot. Okay. Alright. And then we'll have pitch down. Yeah, our solar panel situation is not going to be good. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the fairing, but ignition. Alright. Uh, actually, decisively suborbital this time. Hmm. Okay, but uh, I guess we can... We should be able to land the other piece before this needs to be dealt with. Time to apoapsis is quite high already. Yeah, I just need to remember to jump back to this. Okay. Still going up. RCS on retrograde. Actually, negative surface relative velocity. Well, we're sort of in the same sort of situation. I don't know if we could hit land this time or not, but we're not configured to hit land. This is a problem. <laughs> um, uh, so this time we need to hit water. Uh, well, I mean, I guess we could hit land with the lander legs, but we don't have air brakes. I took those off. I probably should just leave them on, just in case. Have it uh, be able to do both types of things. Though, if we could just do water landings, we could take the landing legs up off, and that'd make the rocket look better. We'll have to see. But I definitely want to test the water landing this time. Probably we'll have to retro burn, and that'll bring us short of landfall. Well, I'm going to force the issue and slow down a bit. Well, we might hit land anyway. The parachutes are configured for a sideways landing, though. So we can't land vertically like this. Okay. Hmm. So the parachutes will rip the vehicle apart. Right. That that's what happened, right? Aerodynamic stresses. Okay. Yeah. So we can't do it that way. Because the parachutes may if we didn't deploy them all at the same time, but yeah, it's a little bit harsh. Hmm. Hmm. And we were ending up over land this time. So maybe we should reconfigure it for touching down land and go with uh, the Ithaca 1 instead? Such choices. Okay, well, I wanted to jump back to the main mission, you know, and get that into orbit. But it said that I, I had to jump back four minutes because the, uh, we couldn't save in the atmosphere and I didn't want to wait for everything to blow up. But we've got another shot at this. I might as well take it. It'll probably die anyway. If we deviated south, we'd hit water. But then I have to be careful about how we hit the parachutes anyway. Maybe that's the way to go. Okay, well, that's definitely south. There's only a little stretch of land there, so if we actually hit land, it'd be quite, quite bad luck. Air brakes would have been nice. So, yeah, instead of deploying all the parachutes at once, I'm going to arm two drogue chutes. Those two only. Now, once we deploy the parachutes, we're not going to be using the engines anyway. So we, we can just use all this fuel for slowing down to prevent overheating. 
Though we have to save some for slowing down to deploy the parachutes, right? There's that thing. Oh, I think we're still going to be sort of hitting land. Okay, no. Nope, nope, nope. Even that still produces too much drag. I mean, too much aerodynamic stress. It's all aerodynamic stresses. Um, maybe parachutes at the top? Or we need more fuel to slow down. Oh, that's a problem, isn't it? Okay, let me go back to the VAB and think about this, though. Maybe just air brakes will do. Maybe just air brakes will do. Uh, oh, well, I can't go to the VAB. Uh, let me wait till everything explodes, and then I have to go back to the main mission and make sure we get that into orbit first. Okay, that's good enough. 127 by 87, and... We will rename this... Fuel tank 3, but I don't think the solar panels will work, but I'll just call it fuel tank 3. Uh, let's see. Yeah, broken. Broken. Okay, so that's something else we need to fix. The fairings, and we should have backup solar panels as well. Just the always open ones instead of the extending ones. Now one thing that's really limiting us is the size of the SRB. Like I said, the SRB is sized to its maximum available size. And I need to be able to unlock larger sizes for SRBs if, we're, if we want to really make this work. Or I could reduce the mass of the payload. But I really want to just keep it uh, the current payload. Maybe we can get better SRBs if we unlock heavier rocketry. I don't know, but we have the science. And um, I don't think it's got to be under actuators, supersonic flight, or specialized control or anything like that. Those would be nice sciences to unlock, but, and certainly not nuclear propulsion. Maybe very heavy rocketry, very heavy rocketry, but I think uh, it should be able to size up a little bit under heavier rocketry. So that's what I'm going to unlock, and we will see. Okay, so I'm happy to say that worked. So I was able to increase the amount of delta V in this stage to 1,237 meters per second. That means it's a little bit more expensive, of course, and heavier. But it burns for 40 seconds now. Its thrust is a little bit higher. 1.42 kilonewtons. I don't know why there's an extra K in there. Oh, uh, 1. Uh, 1,420 kilonewtons. So extra K because it actually should be meganewtons. Uh, but uh, all right. So yes, that's the thrust of the SRB. And now our lower stage burns for a little bit less time. I've reduced the diameter of it. It used to be three meters, now it's 2.88. And that's because we don't need quite so much burn time. Otherwise, our sea level thrust weight ratio will be critically low. It's pretty low right now. But uh, yeah, we, just in case for all situations, we've got the lander legs. We've got uh, eight air brakes now. I've put the drogue chutes on top here instead of on the side, so hopefully they won't uh, contribute to vehicle failure. But that means that we have to cut those chutes after the main chutes deploy. So otherwise uh, the vehicle will be tipping to one side and we don't want that. Um, the over overall body is lighter, so the main chutes should be able to handle them even better, though we haven't gotten to that part yet so far. Okay, I think that's the idea. Let's try this now. Now on the right side we're delivering a lot of fuel to orbit so in the next few episodes we'll try and use that fuel. <laughs> Seems like a logical thing to do. Alright, ignition. And launch. So we have to remember the 1,237 is what we got there, so we should go to about 1,100, 1,200 meters per second. Yeah, I probably should have. Oh, the clamshell thing. Oh, right. Okay, well, set. Yeah, I forgot to fix the clamshell thing. Prograde? Uh, actually, surface zero. 
So we lost an engine on the launch stage. I guess that, that'll be alright. That shouldn't cause any actual problems, it's just a uh, loss of funds, should we actually recover the thing. A little bit of imbalance though. Okay, that's orbit, and... 182 by 76. Alright. Let's hope that the other piece is still in space. So we're not going nearly as fast as we were before. We're definitely not going to hit the Eastern Peninsula at all. We're definitely landing in the water this time. Thanks to the much more powerful SRB. We lost the entire engine pod there. Gonna shut off the outer engines. So only the center engine is operating. That way we won't suddenly go imbalanced or anything like that from the thrust. That doesn't mean that we're not going to be imbalanced from the aerodynamics. Okay, we've got some overheating warning there. I'll just use a little bit of thrust whenever that pops up. Doesn't seem like we need much there. But we'll need some thrust to slow down for the parachutes, I think. No, actually we're, we're going pretty slow this time. Uh, slow down just for aerodynamics so we don't have aerodynamic stress. That's the drogue chutes. Here come the main chutes. Drogue chutes get cut. So now we're sideways. Not as sideways as I'd, li as I'd like, but I think um, I think it'll be better once the, they fully deploy. Take the air brakes off so that they don't mess with the effect and did I not action group the oh I did action group the floats okay oh shoot shoot don't do that uh, off just in case okay those floats look a little bit small I've got bigger floats if necessary and it's tipping um, as if this end is heavier now that's not good shoot So we'll need to move these parachutes further up, I guess. And also it's a little bit fast, 6.4. Where is that fuel? It's here. Shoot. I didn't expect it to be there. Uh, a little bit late for the fuel transfer. Ah, uh, we lost the back end. Ironically, the front end, which touched the water first, survived just fine. It's the back end that got destroyed. Okay, well, recover what we can. Alright, so I've made some adjustments. I've added an extra set of floats. I moved the parachutes. I added an extra set of fuel lines at the bottom so that these outer engine pods can uh, fuel feed properly. I think uh, they were taking it out of this tank through this nose cone. And that's why we ended up with the fuel in this tank because uh, going through this nose cone, uh, the more distant tanks are actually this one and that one. So maybe this will work out or maybe I'll just have to pump the fuel manually again. I also changed the, the fairing so that it's not clamshell anymore so it won't bang into things hopefully. So those were the changes. Let's see if this works. I think this will be the last test uh, for this episode. Uh, next time we'll try and do something with the fuel and then after that I will return to this whole theme. I just also wanted to make a return to launch site one instead of a splashdown one but we'll get to that. So that's that's gonna be a subplot of all of this as we continue in the colonization series. Here we go, ignition. Oh, and I removed the landing lights. Let's try the fairings now. Oh, okay. That 
should be good enough. All right, separation. Okay, and I want to zero out our pitch there. Let's check this time that the panel, the panels are fine. Good. All the other ones, the panels were not fine, so that's gonna be a problem. We've got a lot of fuel up there, yes, but we don't have a lot of electric charge. I forgot to put the always open solar panels, so it's good that this time it worked out. Okay. And again, obviously the SRB is not the most efficient thing in terms of Delta V and ISP, but it is cheap. And cheap is good. Uh, we need a little bit more to lift our periapsis, that's fine. Let's separate. I just want to get this into orbit before dealing with the other part. Okay, well it's in orbit. Alright. And it's going down. So let's quickly do this. Let's see us on. Air brakes. We've got all the engines this time. Can we keep them? I'm mostly just dumping fuel now. Okay, drogue shoots. Probably don't even need the drogue shoots if we do that much of a burn. Now obviously this stage could be used to actually deliver the stuff to orbit without the SRB if it's a lighter payload. But then we wouldn't be able to recover it probably. Okay, main shoots. And off on that. Cut the drogue shoots. And forget the air brakes. Deploy the floats. Oh, the new floats weren't actually grouped. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us. Still not quite. Oh, it's too heavy in the tail. Okay. Well, we can adjust that. That looks pretty flat, huh? That looks pretty flat. It's still 6.5, 6.4 meters per second, though. That's harder than I wanted. So we'll have to add extra parachutes or tweak these somehow. Ah, uh, the the floats aren't aren't big enough to keep these from hitting the water. That's not good. We don't want our engines drenched, but that's successful, folks. We have an intact booster. Well, that's an excellent way to conclude this, I think. We got our payload to orbit. We've got a lot of fuel in orbit now. Let's recover this. Alright, so on that somewhat successful note, 86.4% of the total value recovered, 80,000 funds. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.